We have many, many great art teachers in our county, all of them utilizing their creative skills to present quality classroom experiences for their students. Today, we're pleased to share some of their work with you. Learn and enjoy. Hi art friends, this week's distance learning lesson is going to be all digital. You're going to use your laptop or iPad to go to www.permati.com. I'll post a link in the assignments and you're going to make your own kaleidoscope painting. Have you ever looked through a kaleidoscope? They're usually tubes filled with different objects that have mirrors inside that reflect those objects at different angles. Sounds complicated, right? When you look through a kaleidoscope, you might see something that looks like this lots of colors and patterns. You can move kaleidoscopes around and depending on what the light looks like it might change the design. On our art iPads we have apps that you can play with to get the same effect like Amazeograph and Doodle Dandy but since we're all on different devices and some of you are working on laptops I'm gonna have you go to permati.com and make your own kaleidoscope painting. This is what the website looks like down here, you'll see there's lots of choices for colors that you can use. So select one of those and just move your finger around on the trackpad and you will be making your own kaleidoscope design. It's pretty amazing. You can change the brush size and make it larger. Or make it smaller. This will give you more detailed lines in your design. So you can kind of create a layered look. And I think it makes it look more interesting. So go ahead and play around with different colors, different designs, different brush sizes, and create as many of these as you'd like. You can upload as many of these as you want to Artsonia. If you're working on an iPad, you have a few other options for this project. You can go on Permati, like us, or you can use one of the other apps I've mentioned, Amazeograph, Doodle Dandy. I even have a kaleidoscope camera app called Kaleidocam. Or you can search for free kaleidoscope apps. Either way, when you're finished, you should be able to take a screenshot of your project by pushing down the power button at the top of the iPad and the home button at the same time, and then sending it to Artsonia or uploading it to Teams. If you're working on a laptop and you're finished, you want to click on the Save Image button. A window will pop up, or should pop up. I always click on Open with Preview so that I can save it the way I want to. Your saved image will open, and you can go to the top toolbar of your laptop and select File, then Move to, and Desktop. That way, you can find it easier. If you have your own way of saving an image, please feel free to do so. Also remember, I am working on a Mac, so your screen may look a little bit different. Now, as far as uploading your image to save, you have a few options. You can upload it to our Grades chat channel. You can also turn it in through the Assignments tab on Teams, but I know sometimes that runs slow. Well friends, that about sums it up on Week 3 Distance Learning. I hope you enjoyed making your digital kaleidoscopes. I miss you all very much, and I hope you enjoy making art with me while we're apart. Bye!
Hi art friends, I'm back with week three's art distance learning lesson. This week we're going all digital. Now, here's the tricky part. I know we're all using different devices. Some of you are on laptops, some are on iPads, and I myself am using a MacBook. So I tried to find a website that we could all use. I found a really neat app called Sketchpad. I will be honest with you, it works best if you're on a laptop, but it also works with an iPad. You just have to be patient. Our lesson is going to be a lesson on abstract art. Abstract art is more about the shapes and colors and feelings that it expresses, not about your artwork actually looking like something real. Abstract art focuses on colors, shapes, and lines, and is interpreted differently by everyone who sees it. Our lesson is going to be mostly about experimentation. So we're going to go to our website and we're going to play around with the tools and colors and sizes and we're going to make some amazing abstract art. So let's go. We are going to type in sketch.io into our browser and click on the link and then you're going to click English. That'll take you to your canvas. Now, when, you, when it opens up, you might see artwork that you've done before if this is not your first time going to this app, but that's all right. So I'm going to go down to the plus button, and I'm going to start a new painting, and I'm going to check out my tools. So here is where your tools are. It's on stamp right now, but there's lots of different options. This is the different kinds of stamps. So you can go to paintbrush and you can just play around with making a few marks. I have a gradient selected for my outline. I'm going to change it to pencil and just, just kind of make some marks and see which marks you like. Now I'm going to go to the outline button and this is where the cool stuff is. So you can choose a plain color. You can go to what's called linear which is kind of like lines. So if I select one of these it'll change my pencil just sort of like a rainbow. And then the other one is radial. And that is sort of like a, a cent it has a center to it. So if I go to a paintbrush and I do a radial and change my brush to larger, it makes this design. Perfect for a background. Now I need to zoom out because this canvas is tricky. It kind of hides part of it. So make sure you zoom out. And then I always click back on the color button to make that zoom in, zoom out menu go away. And I'm just going to fill my canvas up with a nice background. I'm going to go experiment with the stamps because they're very, very neat. So I'm going to pull down the stamp menu and I'm going to go up and I'm going to type in the word water or watercolors. You can play around with as many stamps as you want. I want to use the paint splatters because I think they, they kind of help my artwork look a little bit more painterly. So I'm going to change my color. And you can just stamp individually. I'm going to search for paint now. I almost feel like I'm splatter painting for real when I'm doing this project. And I'm going to change my color. And I'm just going to put splatters all over. So you can see that there's layers starting to form on my canvas. Almost like if you were really painting, except when you do it digitally you don't have to let the paint dry in between layers. Type in water or paint. Change your color and just experiment. Remember, we're going for an abstract look. We're going to focus on line, shape, and color. Now that I have my background done, I'm going to experiment with some other tools. So I went up and I changed from stamp to what's called the sketchy tool. And I'm going to create a new layer. Make my line nice and big and I'm just going to kind of scribble all over the canvas. It's going to really add to my abstract art. 
Now if you choose one of the linear tools, it'll actually change colors while you're drawing. Whereas if you just use a plain color, it'll just be plain color all the time. The spider web tool is really neat too. So I'm going to change my color and go for it. There is an undo button on the top right corner, but I find when I'm making abstract art, I don't like to undo. If I think it's a mistake, I'll just cover it up. Like Bob Ross always says, there's no mistakes. There's only happy little accidents. You can experiment as much as you want, but when you're all finished, I want you to do one last thing. Type on that letter T, that's the text tool, and enter your name. I'm going to have you put your name in the corner just like we normally would do with our artwork. You can change the color and you can change the font. You can make it bigger or smaller, but make sure that we can see it so we know it's your artwork. All right, I think I'm all finished. Now to save it. If you're working on a laptop, I need you to follow along with these directions. Go down to the bottom and hit the disk where it says export. You are going to choose download JPEG or JPEG. After you do that, you should have a little window pop up and I always choose open with preview. Then you can go to the file menu at the top of your laptop and select move to and then you will choose desktop. That way you know where your artwork is stored so when you go to upload it to me for grading, you can find it a little bit easier. Remember, this is my way of saving my work. I am on a MacBook, so if you or your parents have a different way, that's fine because my screen might look a little bit different than yours. To actually turn the project into me, what I would like for you to do is try to look up Artzonia Classroom and click on that link. From here, you can upload our school code and enter your name. Hit Add New Artwork and select the project. If you are in second grade, make sure you hit second grade distance learning. Select your image. It should be on the desktop. Hit Open and then hit the green button, Upload Now. And there it is. So if it looks good, you can go ahead and hit accept and then enter your art title. Submit to teacher and enter your artist statement. Remember, you can write about what you like, what you didn't like, um, what your painting reminds you of, what you learned while doing this project. Go ahead and submit it. And once you see the orange text, that means you are all finished. When I have your project in Artsonia, I can give you a grade for it. Although the Artsonia way makes it easier for me, Miss B, to sort through all these projects, you can also upload to our chat channel or to Teams, but I know sometimes that runs slow. Saving this project is much easier on an iPad. All you have to do is take a screenshot of your project by pushing down the power button at the top of the iPad and the home button at the same time and then sending it to Artsonia or uploading it to Teams. I hope you enjoyed making abstract digital art with me. Remember, abstract art is not about what it looks like. It's more about the lines, shapes, colors, and feelings associated with the artwork. I know this was a lot of information, but I also know you will do great. And if this works out, you will have another way of completing projects that I introduced from a distance, since I know a lot of you don't have all the art supplies that we're used to having in the art room. If you need any help, remember you can message me through the chat channel anytime. I can't wait to see your projects, and I hope you enjoyed making art with me while we're apart. Bye! <gasps>to our online virtual art room for Curtis. Um, I want to welcome you to our first art lesson this week and I wore a shirt that I thought was really appropriate. I bought this shirt for Dr. Seuss's birthday recently and it says, I will teach art here or there, I will teach art everywhere, which um, is ironic to this week because it takes on a whole new meaning, doesn't it? 
So I've been preparing some videos for you and some information on different resources for you for lessons that I think you're going to have fun with this week. I hope you all are well and have a great week making art. This week we're going to talk about symmetry in art and how artists use symmetry. Symmetry is when a shape or a design can be divided in the middle and this design will be the same on both sides. The left side and the right side match. In art, artists use shapes and color to show symmetry in their design. Symmetry can also be found in nature. Sometimes symmetry can be something that man has made. Like in India, the Taj Mahal is a structure that if divided in the middle looks the same on both sides. Butterflies are another example of symmetry in nature. This monarch butterfly has the same color, shapes, and lines on both sides of his wings, and they are exactly a match. Today we're going to use a piece of drawing paper to do a drawing of a symmetrical butterfly. I'm going to be using a pencil and a crown. And the paper I have that I'm using is just a piece of white copy paper from the uh, printer. The first thing we're going to need to do is find the line of symmetry or fold in the paper. So we'll need to fold it in half. When you're folding paper, it's easiest to hold the edges with one hand and use a finger to tightly or press down with your fingernail to crease the other side. Once you've folded your paper, then you can open the paper back up and the fold line down the center of the paper will now be our line of symmetry for our butterfly drawing. We're only going to draw one side, one half. So you can draw on the right side or the left side, but only one side. I'm going to be drawing on the left side. The first thing I want to think about is the shape for my butterfly wing. Butterfly wings usually have a top and a bottom wing, so I'm going to draw a large curve at the bottom that matches the curve at the top. And now I'm thinking, you know, maybe I want it a little bit skinnier, so that's why I drew with a pencil first instead of a crayon. And I'm going to adjust the bottom wing and make it just a little bit different shape and go ahead and erase what I didn't want there in the first place. Once you have the shape of your butterfly wing on one half of your paper, then you can think of different round shapes like circles, ovals, to fill in the design, or lines that are curved. And I'm thinking of how the monarch butterfly had some orange and black stripes, so I'm going to add some lines on my butterfly wing. Another thing you can think of is drawing a line that copies part of your design and then loops around and goes back to the beginning to create a new shape. Once all of the designs are in and you're satisfied with the lines and shapes that you've got, the next step is to take a crayon. I'm using a black crayon. Any crayon will work. Any color. The darker crayons might be easier to see than the lighter ones like yellow or pink, but those would still work too. So any colored crayon is going to be used to help us get the outline of our design traced over. And the reason we're using a crayon is because we want that waxy material from the crown on the paper. In a minute, I'm going to show you how to make it show up or appear on the other side of your paper without having to draw it again. And the, for this reason, a colored pencil probably wouldn't work that well, and a marker probably wouldn't work that well. We definitely need something with a waxy coating like a crayon. When you're finished with your design, we're going to fold the paper back over. And because I have a thin copy paper, I can actually kind of see through it to the design underneath. Next, we're using a spoon or something, anything that's a hard object that you can rub the paper with. A spoon probably works best if you flip it over and use the edge of the spoon to rub and press kind of hard. You're going to need to give a little pressure rubbing right over where you can see. I can actually see through the paper to see where the line is and then rub right over top of where that line is with the edge of my spoon. I'm going to keep doing this to all the lines I've drawn 
and all the shapes that I've drawn just on the edge. I don't need to rub the whole entire paper. I'm just rubbing on each line where I see the line. And while I'm finishing this up, we can talk about if you don't have, um, if, you, if you have something to rub with, like a spoon or a hard object, another option would be to fold the paper back the opposite direction and put the paper on a light surface like a window where you can actually see the sunlight through the window to trace it. So I'm almost done rubbing all the lines and when I'm finished I'm going to open the paper up and see what showed up on the right side or the other side. Oh look there it is. I can see my design and it's has the exact shape, the exact lines as the other side. If you don't see your design showing up, it probably means you should go back and make the crayon lines a little darker by tracing over them several times or pressing a little bit harder with your crayon. But if you've traced it hard enough and you rub with the edge of a hard object like a spoon, you should be able to have enough of a guideline there to uh, trace over. Oops, made a little mistake there. I didn't mean to trace that much. Well, you know, sometimes mistakes happen in art, so I guess the best way to make this stay symmetrical is to just do the same thing on the other side. So I've got to do the same thing. Remember, if it has symmetry, it's exactly the same on both sides, mistakes and all. That's a happy oops. After you've got your design looking symmetrical, you could add color. Now I'm sticking with crayons because that's what I have to work with, but remember, if I put red on one side, then I need to look for the same shape and same part of my design on the other side to use that same color because the colors and the lines need to be symmetrical too. All of the areas don't have to be colored solid. You could think of some nice patterns using different lines that we've learned in the art room to fill in your butterfly design. You can use a variety of colors. When you're working with different colors, sometimes it's a nice idea to use it in more than one place. So notice I used the red in the circle, and I also used the red again somewhere else in the butterfly to kind of give it some unity or tie all the colors together. When you're coloring a larger area in solid, like my purple shape is a lot bigger than the little red circle I colored, still use the same short strokes with your hand, not your whole arm. Remember, we want to color a little bit at a time to try to cover the whole paper that we're coloring and not miss any spots. So I'm going to keep working on adding color and adding lines and filling in uh, my butterfly with all the different colors of crayons that I have. If you don't have any crayons, again, we talked last week about other art supplies you might use, like colored pencils, markers, even pens, different color. Or if all you have is a drawing pencil, you could f experiment with different ways to make that pencil have different values or designs by pressing light on the pencil, dark on the pencil, using your pencil to fill in with different patterns, with different line patterns in different areas, and you could still come up with a butterfly design with just a pencil and a piece of paper, a crayon, and a spoon. I'll be right back to show you my finished product. There we go. There's my finished symmetrical butterfly. And I was thinking, with everybody in their home these days, I might take my scissors and cut the butterfly out to hang in my window for the neighbors to see. So maybe you'll think of sharing your art with your neighbors too.